today we're exploring La Palma. It's a small island part of the Canary Islands. We flew here directly from the from Barcelona, which took us around three hours, I think. All these islands are volcanic and all very different from each other. They're all differently, they have a different age as well. Um, La Palma is one of the wilder ones, it's the one furthest out into the Atlantic. Therefore the weather is also a bit different. It's quite green here compared to the other islands which are a bit more a little bit more desert tea. We're staying in the Santa Cruz La Palma, which is a small town on the west coast, remember properly. Um, it's it's quite small, everything is small on the island, the island itself is small. I think it's only got like 15,000 inhabitants, probably. Um, but anyway, it's it's all, it's one of the, it's, I think it's the steepest island in the world. I'll research a little bit more. To explore the island, we have an electric car. It's a Peugeot with a range of 100 kilometers, I think. Um, this won't be enough for the whole of the island, but we have another option for that. And because the charging ports for the electric cars are just being built, once they're built, it will, it will be no problem to get around. But the cool thing is, we can move around basically for free because we charge for free. And even if we would have to pay for 100 kilometers, I think we pay about 1 euro 50 if we would have to pay, but we don't. So, no money going to the petrol giants, which makes me very happy. This is our little place. The bed, so two dorm, two bed thing, toilet, tiniest bath in the world. There you go, the little kitchen area. <laughs> and now we're going to head out for some coffee. the outside. We're in the old part of the town. That's it. We're going to the Playa Nogales. It's a beach, you have to hike down this path for about half an hour and then you come to this secluded beach. It's one of our favorite beaches here. And it's one of the most dangerous as well. Cow <laughs> too! The beach itself is dangerous because the current is extremely strong and people always get swept away. So it's one or two tourists a year which get swept away. The second danger is this huge cliff where rocks tend to fall down. There's not much you can do to be honest. So knock on wood. Now all we need is a good spot. It's high tide so the beach is a bit small now. Which can be good enough to do in the day.
you know the car. And we have four, what's it called? About a quarter of the batteries are full to get back to the pub. Santa Cruz. Will we make it? So to get going, highly complicated matter, turn the key, wait for the noise, put it in drive, magic, that's it, off we go. No need to change gears, you don't have anything, it just has the, the brake and the accelerator, and if you let go of the accelerator, it actually breaks and regenerates the batteries, so it's clever. So, why an electric car you might ask? I think there's a few reasons. If you can hear it, or better said, you can't hear it, it's completely quiet. 100 kilometers cost us, if you would pay, about one euro, not even that probably. Tax is nothing, insurance is lower, you get benefits from the government, you can park anywhere. There's a lot of things going for it, I guess. Of course, there's a few bad things as well. It is, the range is um, about 100 kilometers, which on this island, which is the steepest island in the world, by the way, is a little bit, uh, get, does get a little bit tight. So it's, it always, always stressing out a little bit, oh, will we get back, will we get there? We always get there, but especially at the moment, they're still building the charging stations. They should finish in the next couple of weeks, so after that, I don't think we much of a problem anymore. The price is also a little bit on the bad side still. They're still quite expensive to produce. I think this one you cost nearly 20,000. For us, for what it is, it is quite expensive. You do get it back eventually, I think. Another great part for the electric car is that the maintenance is much lower. It's around 40% lower compared to a, norm, to a, to a comparable sized um, petrol car, which makes sense because it's made of fewer pieces. The engine is only one thing, you have the batteries, you have the regulation things, which I don't know, we don't know what exactly it's made of. But if you look at the engine bay of this and the normal car, you just immediately see the difference. So, would I buy one electric car? Absolutely. The sooner the market gets flooded by these cars, the quicker they will be affordable and the technology will advance and even get better. I also firmly believe that this is the future. I drove this car for five days and sitting in something, a newer petrol powered car, it just seemed ancient, even though this car is one of the basic models. I could go on about this for ages, but if you have the chance to test one for yourself, go for it, especially if it's for a few days. There's absolutely no sound in here. Just the electric engine, which you can't hear any here. It's a nice thing. Just put it in drive and go. There's only one, two pedals, brake, and accelerator. That's it. It's a small little valley in the north of the island. And it's so green. You can't believe it's how green it is. It's full of farm, moss. It's like something like Jurassic Park. Absolutely amazing.
good here. Especially after being in Barcelona, I couldn't imagine the difference. We made it back to our little electric car. We both are in awe of the electric car. We love the electric car. <laughs> 